Right. Oh, welcome back. Before we, we get into today's topic, last last week or two weeks ago, our podcast that was dropped is about Ozempic, some agglutide, the conversation around that drug and weight loss. So if you're interested on what it is, how it works, how it works for weight loss, our opinions on it. Make sure you go check that podcast out. It's about uh, 25 to 30 minutes. A uh, good little listen there. You can maybe listen to it as you drive to and from work or anything like that. And if you want to watch our lovely faces instead of yep. hear our sultry voices, then you can go to YouTube and watch us there. Yeah. But <laughs> today's to topic... Face. Say what? They come see this face. Yeah, that's right. Today's topic, this week's topic, is kind of gearing us up for the holiday season, right? It's it's already October, which is hard to believe, and we've just got back to back holidays and events. We've got Halloween at the end of this month, then we got Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's, all in order, really quick. We've got obviously. A lot of parties, events, life for a lot of people just gets crazy, hectic, um, and more busy than it usually is. So we want to kind of talk about how do we stay on track? What do we do during this time if we can't do certain things? What do we prioritize? Things like that. So hopefully we will give you some helpful tips um, to manage this part of the year and quite frankly, any time of the year, but we thought this would be appropriate because of the season that we're about to get into. Yep. And it's, it's true for both of us too. This isn't just like for the listener, like my yeah. schedule gets with two kids, like the holidays, two sides of the family, uh, grandparents in different States. Like it's about to get hectic. <laughs> so got to have some sort of a plan in place. Absolutely. So would that be your number one tip, maybe, is to have some sort of a plan? Like, yep. life's getting crazy. What do I need to do? How do I prioritize stuff? What would that look like for you? So let's say a client comes to you, or even for yourself, that, hey, this next month, obviously, or months, I should say, going to be looking a little crazy. How would you guide a client to make a plan for this time of year yeah well i mean food and movement we know we're going to need both of those to continue to make progress or maintain our current level of progress whatever we've made towards our goal or just you know maintaining health so keeping those two things in mind it's you know i i think looking at a time frame of is it the whole month that's going to be hectic two weeks whatever it is check in with yourself don't overthink it like there is something you can do. So that's my biggest tip is every week I tend to on Saturday night or Sunday night, just kind of think through what my week is going to look like. So whenever your month is going to be hectic or whatever, do that weekly, but also just before you get into it, look over the whole month. Like when do you have those business dinners and you're going to be with family on this date, you'll be driving on this date, flying on this date. That way you actually know what is possible. Because if you just go into it with, I'm going to do my best, I'm going to eat so healthy, and I'm going to make sure I'm exercising three or four times, there's going to be weeks where you can't do that. And if you had just thought through, what can I do, you could have found the solution. Like that day is going to be steps. That day is going to have no movement, so we got to be, you know, dialed in on nutrition. Like, so I think the biggest thing is, yeah, previewing your week, whether now you're not hectic, but especially whenever things get busy, what is coming up? What can you do? Yeah, essentially we are picking and choosing what battles we can do whether that looks like even like you mentioned a day by day thing like okay today i can't work out so today i'm dialing in nutrition or you know something like that so really we're prioritizing maybe giving and taking certain things that just aren't available at that time like for instance 
you even mentioned before we were off here that I think you shared it on your Instagram actually that like you didn't work out for almost 20 days. Yeah. So what 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 does that look like to you in a sense of all right, there's no lifting for 20 days or whatever, <laughs> maybe even cardio. What did those days look like? How did you plan those out or prioritize certain things if you didn't have the ability to work out? Yeah. So um man just to cover it like you just put it out there too like basically like life hit and this is gonna happen to everybody that listens like but uh whatever it was 20 30 days ago my grandmother passed away literally yesterday my dad had a heart attack um and we would not be recording if he wasn't good and stable so just know if you're listening to this he's okay um you know got got a few different procedures he's gonna be all right um i i broke out in like a random full body rash like some autoimmune thing possibly like Uh, got possibly COVID in the middle of it, or at least some other sickness, all in 20 or 30 days. Worst-ish 30 days of my life so far, I think. So that's going to happen. And it's like, you know, I looked at that, and it's like, what could I do during those times? And they were not perfect, but it was every day, what could I do? So even in traveling, you know, I didn't just leave it up to because I drove 15 hours there and back for um, a funeral. It's like, OK, I can just let the day happen or I can think through it and I could pack. Like, I'm not going to be able to walk. I can pack fruit. I can gauge my stops knowing that I can stop and get a Chick-fil-A Cobb salad and not a Culver's, you know, butter burger and a malt. Like, Bummer. yeah, I know hey, those are good. That's, that's good food. But it's like there's always a uh, there's always an option. And so you've just got to figure out for that short bit of time, instead of shutting down and just letting the day happen and you just slipping through it and then feeling worse on the other side, if you will just make a few choices and you take control of the day, you're going to feel so much better. You're not going to lose your progress. Like even me not working out over 20 days, not lifting for over 20 days. I can, I still got back to my workouts. I'm still strong. You're not going to lose muscle overnight, but just, Being conscious and making decisions every single day to push your health forward or at least maintain, I think, are key. So for me, the big things I focused on was it was steps in nutrition because that was really all I could do. And it wasn't like I was eating salad every single day. Um, You know, some of my food was determined by family members and stuff I was staying with. But it's what I always tell my clients, like, don't be an idiot just because you don't you can't pick your, your foods for the weekend or whatever it may be. Like, there's a difference. There's good, better, best. Like, just make the best decision you can. You know, it doesn't, not everything has to be the ice cream late at night or whatever it may be. So for me, steps were key. And that's one that I would just encourage everybody to, to watch as we get into the holidays. You may not have time to drive to the gym, do the hour workout, drive back, but you probably will have time to do a lap around the neighborhood. And the steps have saved me. Um, you know, we, we talked about this too. Like I'm, I've, I've lost a good amount of weight over the course of the year. And it's been mostly, I would give it credit to steps and nutrition. It's not been because I'm just absolutely crazy. Um, I'm, I'm averaging 10,000 steps a day. That's what I would encourage people to do. And, you know, maybe you work in an office a lot of times you get 3000 steps. Well, improve what's go for 5,000, whatever it may be, but you know, not to get off topic, but yeah, I would say during that time that I was away or off, it was like focus on nutrition to the best of my ability and know what that's going to look like for you. Like, it's easy for me to say focus on your nutrition, but what does that look like for you? Do you need to have three meals a day so that you don't skip a meal, feel super hungry and then overdo it late at night? So what are your three meals going to be? Ask yourself that question. OK, your three meals should probably have protein in them. How are you going to get that protein? And this is really basic, but a lot of us just accidentally slip through our day. And, you know, that's where we see, oh, I skipped breakfast to save some calories. Oh, I had a salad for lunch that had no protein. And at lunch or supper, you're starving and you go crazy in the drive-thru. Ask yourself, what are your three meals going to look like? Where's your protein coming from for for that day? Can you get a piece of fruit? Can you eat some vegetables? And you can just slowly, if you ask yourself those questions, you're going to be able to answer them and say, yes, I can do this. If I plan I can make this available for myself. That's going to keep you moving forward. So, yeah, as you navigate the holidays, I think it's just a constant question and answer for yourself and kind of surveying your week. What can you do? Yeah, and even if you can't, like in your case, a lot of this stuff popped up Mm -hmm. out of the blue. So it wasn't like 
you could look ahead and predict these things. A lot of it was on the fly. So in that case, instead of looking at it as a, you know, week by week thing, you had to adjust day by day. And I like a point that you made in there is that you, you basically took ownership of it. You decided to do these th certain things. And I think that is where some people maybe not necessarily make the mistake, but instead of just kind of leaving it up to chance as it were, or being surprised that such and such happened or, you know, I had a dinner party and I went to it and I just drank and ate so much food. I just wasn't expecting that. It's like, well, maybe, <clears throat> excuse me, if you know that you're going to have that dinner party or whatever, take ownership of the fact of and make a choice. I'm only going to have maybe one drink or X amount of desserts or, you know, something like that. You need to consciously make that choice instead of just free going into it just <clears throat> i'm, uh, I'm going to wing it as it were yeah. right without the plan or at least without making a conscious choice of what you're going to prioritize if indeed you want to at least maintain the progress during this season right i've got a client who's traveling excuse me next week he's not lifting for two weeks obviously he's, he's going to italy you're going to enjoy some amazing food you you can't go and be like, I'm not going to have this type of food. But one thing he is definitely focused on is steps. And yep. you mentioned that the steps, if anything, are a lifesaver for most people in the the journey of maintenance and being able to maintain during a season. So it's just making those conscious choices of what can I do? And if it isn't, I just can't get 10,000 steps because of my job. Okay. Maybe get five or seven thousand steps whatever that looks like for you you know put it into perspective of what you are capable to do capable of doing with your life and lifestyle mm -hmm. and I, I like that point too of take like you said taking control of your day doesn't mean that in those scenarios whether it's the parties or the holidays <laughs> whatever that you can't have the things it's set the limit for yourself of Hey, they're every, you know, it's everybody's serving brownies tonight or whatever the thing is, mimosas, you know, something like so set your boundary. Don't don't make it zero, but yeah. make it two, two of the thing, whatever it is. Like you can still participate, but just little boundaries are gonna be a lifesaver during this season. Because it's never the like the one M M cookie or whatever my mom bakes, you know, 20 dozen cookies every time we go over there on the holidays. It's never the one that gets me into trouble or the two. It's whenever you like just sit there and eat three before supper, one after supper, you have one more on the way out the door, like just set the boundaries. That mm -hmm. way you still get to participate in the fun, but you still also don't lose your health like with it for the next three months and then land on January 1st with, dang, I got 10 more pounds to lose and I feel terrible. Yeah, yeah. Talk. I want you to talk a little bit. I love this concept and I think you brought it up on Instagram uh, maybe like a week or two ago talking about essentially how to manage different phases of progress you call them walks and sprints yep. go over that and kind of how we can apply that and what the sprints are what the walks are and what they look like yeah so th this has been huge for my clients too because i work with a lot of parents but i think for anybody I mean, we're all busy and heading into the season you're already busy but like Walks and sprints for me, whenever I kind of frame that for my clients, it's we're always in one of those two phases where mm -hmm. with your nutrition, your workouts, basically your health and how you're improving it, you're either able to sprint and do all of the things like whenever we are able to actually be at home and weigh our foods, drive to the gym, get our steps and get our sleep. Everything is under our control. That's a time whenever we can sprint and we can make a lot of progress on our health. And we need to take advantage of those times because eventually a walk week or maybe a walk month is coming so. where, yeah, where you're in somebody else's house or you're traveling, you get sick off and on. And that's the time where you sit back and you observe what can I do that will continue to move me forward or just maintain my progress. Um, and, and this goes back to our all or nothing podcast. It goes directly against that mindset. Like you've got to get out of the all or nothing. 
it can't be we sprint all the time and whenever we can't sprint we just stop Mm. it's you just dial it back a little bit what's attainable in that week so yeah that's been huge even for me like i shared this i weighed um just be honest 223 pounds like massive and pale january 1st of this last year um and i've just slowly used this for myself of i bet you if you averaged out the whole year maybe there's two weeks a month where i've been able to sprint and two weeks where it's a walk you know mm-hmm. just doing the best i can yep. and i'm down from 223 i weighed in at 191 this morning i'll probably be in the 80s here in the next couple of days good sprint couple of weeks um that's huge like i can see 35 40 pounds of weight loss as long as i continue doing this like it's it's it gets you away from that all or nothing because whenever you are in that all or nothing like i've got a sprint whenever you stop you always feel like you screwed it up and it comes with like this little bout of i don't want to use the word depression like lightly but you do beat yourself up you do get a little bit ashamed of how did i let that week get away how did all of september get away from me so using the walks and sprints, I would encourage you to do that and label your weeks or your days like mentally. You don't have to tell anybody else you're doing this, but you can just look at it and say, you know what? This is a sprint week. Like I'm going to do my best. And hey, if you only get to sprint to Friday, that's great. Then turn on the walk. Do your yep. best. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. And I mean, just given your example here with the weight loss and using both of those methods, that's been over the span of what is this? Ten months now? Yeah. 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 10 months, like a whole year. Most people want to hammer that sprint down for 30, 60, 90 days. Then they go off the rails and completely stop for X amount of time and then go back to the sprint, you know, the back and forth, or it's just completely off the rails and it's just yep. stopped altogether. And then the next year rolls around and they're like, oh, I need to sprint again. And we've talked about this in the past. The sprints are great, obviously, when we can just dial and check every box off. But the walk keeps the momentum going of our habits and the lifestyle. It's not completely stopping. Oh, I can't work out today or I can't work out this week. Therefore, the rest of the boxes are not going to be checked. We've always talked about on this podcast how important momentum is in your he- in your health, in your life. So those walk weeks are keeping that momentum going. It's a slower pace, but, you know, as cheesy as, you know, we always use the example of this is a marathon. We're picking up the pace some weeks and we're slowing down the the pace the other weeks in order to complete the full race. So I love I love that example. It's such a great such a great thing that people can visualize and i i think associate with uh pretty easily yeah it's funny because like in real life i don't sprint at all <laughs> but but i but i understand the analogy yeah, yeah i gotta yeah. start running again but yeah, yeah. walks and sprints man they, it's, it's just helped so much this year and and also like think about that too like how great would it be to apply that concept like for me i could end up on january 1st of this coming year um I don't know. I could be like easily in the 180s, low 180s. So, so like January, like h- how many of you out there have <clears throat> consistently lost weight throughout the year? So January to January, you were 30 or 40 pounds lighter. Rarely happens. Typically, we lose 20-ish pounds trying to get into the summer, and then you just slowly gain it all back. Yeah. So applying this concept, it's it'll help you keep, like you said, the momentum, the habits. Like, mm-hmm. And that helps everything down to that next workout's not so punishing. You're not going to be as sore. Like, that's a very small aspect of it. But it's even going to help with that. Like, you're just going to keep that momentum going where you just get back into the activity. Get back to measuring your foods whenever you're ready. Yeah. And, e- and even, especially during this holiday season coming up, let's say just in a, as an average, most months are walk weeks as opposed to sprint weeks. That is a massive win for you to be able to maintain through this time period into the new year instead of, like we've said, completely falling off the rails or trying to sprint, fall off, sprint, fall off. And then we come to January 1st or the beginning of the new year and you're a little disappointed in yourself because maybe you've gained weight back or, you know, whatever that scenario looks like for you. So during the holiday season to be able to 
turn every week into a walk is not a loss. That is a massive win during this period. This isn't, you know, we don't have to sprint every month. Mm-hmm. And to be able to maintain, which I think people just have a hard time wrapping their head around. Like, they're not making progress if, you know, weight loss isn't happening or, you know, whatever. But just being able to maintain it, that is progress, both physically and mentally especially. So don't be afraid during this period of time. If, if every month is a walk, every week in a month is a walk, that is a massive win. Yep. And like you said, if even if it's just one day that you have the opportunity to sprint or a few days out of the week, that is totally cool. But don't be afraid to slow the pace down, if you will, in this marathon to get to the new year and not having to take steps backwards and then yep. essentially start over or, you know, revamp your journey again. Yeah. That's the other. So like the next suggestion I would make too is be brutally honest with yourself when navigating these next two to three months. And by that, I mean, Thanksgiving is a day and maybe you go see family and it's four days or six days. Like Halloween is a night for most of us. (laughs) That those don't really throw you off that much, but whenever you look at Halloween as ah, I ate a bunch of candy, or I'm going to eat candy, or I'm going to go to the party, so that week is just kind of shot. That's what gets you into trouble during this season. Is whenever you start stamping out entire weeks because there's a holiday in there. Because if you do that, you'll lose the week of Halloween, the week of Thanksgiving, the week of Christmas, the week of New Year's. You're taking a month that you say, well, because I screwed it up. I'm not going to do a whole lot. Be brutally honest with yourself. Thanksgiving, typically, even if you're with family, the actual heavy foods are a day. Enjoy it. Go all in. You can control the other days in some fashion. Like we said, it's a walk. Halloween is a night or a day or a party for most of us. It's not the week. So six days out of seven, you can still own the week and you can still own October. But people start to give up whenever they see the social events start getting booked and they don't. For whatever reason, you don't have the ability to think through, yes, I'm going to the party tonight. They're serving alcohol. They're serving tapas or appetizers. Okay, great. You can still participate in that. It's a day or a night. Everything around that can be on track, and that's going to move you forward. So that's the other tip I have is, like, be brutally honest of what these events are that are coming up and what can you do. Hold yourself to some standard. Don't, like I just said, if you take those four holidays and turn them into five day, five weekdays and you're not very active on the weekends, you are canceling out a whole month. And, you know, October, November, December, you just lost a month out of three that we have left in 2023. So yep. don't fall into that. Yeah, great point. Great point. Anything else that you can think of? Just maybe little tips. I think we've done a great job so far of just some practical, obviously the great example of the sprints and the walks, anything that you can think of. Make a plan, obviously. Yeah, make a plan. Start to take note of what is, that's something I've kind of done this year too, is like, what is working? So a lot of times people are, they're not taking action because they're just not sure if it's gonna work. Like, oh, it doesn't seem ideal. It doesn't seem like it's enough. Give it a shot. I tell my clients this every week whenever we do our check-ins. I say like, hey, that party that you feel like you messed up or whatever it was, that was a practice rep. You got to see how you react in that scenario. You got to see how you reacted great, poorly, whatever it was. Everything is a practice rep. So even if you're not sure if you're handling it or you're going to handle it the best way, you don't have a coach to reach out to, even though you can reach out to either one of us anytime on Instagram DMs. I will practically coach you through my DMs if you really want me to. Um, Even if you don't know if you're doing the right thing, do something and then take note of how did that go? What was the good? What was the bad? You know, how did you handle? Yeah. And, And then just build on it from there. And you may only, whatever that thing is, that week that you're on vacation or whatever, 90% of it may go bad, but you learn something by observing it and you can take that 10% 
and apply it to the next time. It's a practice rep. So just, yeah. you know, take note of what is working for you. Don't be afraid to try something. You will either learn if that is working or not. And then, hey, you are able to move forward from there. Yeah. No, that's good. All right. I think it's been a good informative podcast, especially as we're coming into this time of year. Our next topic, I believe, is going to be on the negative effects of yo-yo dieting, specifically in regards to muscle loss and kind of along this same theme of yo-yo dieting is basically a bunch of sprints and then absolutely nothing, a bunch of sprints to keep (laughs) with that same theme. Um, And especially you see a lot of people doing it this time of year. Maybe it's that one week, like you said, and then they try and get back to it. Uh, We're just going to talk about the negative effects of uh, that and how it applies to the holiday season. Anything else you want to plug before we go? Socials, you got a calorie calculator on your (coughs) website, any of these things? Yeah, calorie calculator if you want to figure out where your calories should be for for weight loss or just to maintain your weight for the next couple of months. Uh, I've got a calorie calculator there on my Instagram or my website. Uh, you can find me, Coach Cure, over on Instagram. I'd love to connect with you there. Don't forget to listen to us, Apple Podcasts, Spotify Podcasts. You can find us at the Perfect Fit Podcast. Make sure you go back if you haven't already. We addressed it at the beginning of this podcast. But if you haven't listened to the last episode on Ozempic, some glutide, that lovely trend that is going around, make sure you do if you're interested in that and uh thank you guys for joining us once again and we'll see you next time